Hey friend, today I wanna to walk you through how to do these beautiful hand-drawn animated swipe on titles that I've been doing in my videos for years. A title that maybe looks like this, or maybe one like that. It's a really cool technique, and I love the handcrafted organic nature it adds to my videos. I, I think it's just got a cool vibe to it that matches my style of filmmaking. And uh, I've been asked a ton of times in my DMs going, how are you doing those hand animated paint on titles? And I always try my best to respond. And the answer is uh, I have a team of, of animators that I pay 24 seven to basically generate these titles for me. Uh, so that way I can deliver some incredible value for you. Nope, it's a lot simpler than that. I hand draw on my iPad while screen recording and then I just mask it out very quickly inside of my editing software, speed ramp it on, and you've got this brilliant hand-drawn title. So let's do the really quick version that I'm gonna go into steps. I'm gonna give you some stuff for free and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna get really into it on this one. So the speed version, if you're just wanting a quick takeaway, I draw on my iPad doing white text over a black background. And while I'm doing my drawing, I make sure to screen record. Then I take this file, import it into my editing software. I crop out the utilities around the side so you don't see the user interface. And then I just set the blending mode to screen and then I speed ramp it. And then sometimes I duplicate it and reverse it so it wipes off. That's the basics of the technique, drawing on while screen recording and then importing it into your software. And you can do this literally with any drawing app. You could even hand do it with your finger. So I use an app called Procreate, which is basically just like Photoshop for the iPad, but you can use anything that allows you to screen record while drawing on it. And uh, I actually got the inspiration from this idea from a guy named Simon Cade. He runs a, a YouTube channel and he was doing these kind of like whiteboard style ones where he would actually draw in real life, take a picture and then import it. I think that was his, his workflow. So you can actually do this same technique on paper, it's a bit of a different process. You do black ink over a white sheet of paper, take a picture, invert it, and then use the blending mode screen. But let's uh, let's dive into some of the steps here on how to really uh, optimize this hand-drawn title thing. So there's a lot of brushes to choose from inside of Procreate. Uh, usually I just open it up, I click on this artistic sub menu there, and just kind of click through and test some of them out. So some of them have very different settings on how they kind of terminate, like it looks like actual paint kind of thing going on. Uh, I don't like that as much for the drawing on, so this is one that I've liked. Um, Jasinki Ink, I believe that's titled. Uh, old Crusty Brush 2 is another one I'd like, but today we're gonna use just this brush one here, which is kind of a tweaked and modified version of one that I've used in the past. The first and most common style I do is these like drawn on where you see the words kind of right on as it goes. So let's show you how to do that. Basically, you need to get to the control center on the iPad, which while you're in Procreate is actually really hard to do because you gotta swipe from the corner. So I've got the accessibility men menu set, and then I just hit record and use the built-in screen recorder in iOS. So once it's recording, I make sure I've got a clean slate, and then let's just write something on. So we'll write left coast, boom. And then I just let it kind of stay for a little bit at the end. And one key thing here is that I make sure not to write over the UI because that's where I need to crop it out later. And then I go back into the control center, hit stop record, and that adds a file right to my, my photos. And then I go over to that file and I hit share and I just airdrop it immediately with my iMac Pro. Boom, so easy. A few tips for doing this process when you're drawing on words is the resolution, the bit rate of the screen recording functionality inside of the iPad isn't amazing. This is one thing that I really wish Apple would update or there was a legitimate third party utility. But for me, I'm using the built-in screen recorder because it's the absolute fastest. You can actually tether this to your computer and get a bitter, bit of a better high resolution image. But uh, once I started doing draw on words, I realized that there's actually a lot of potential here for some various different ideas. And that's where I was thinking, what if I did like brush on paint strokes and you could see text in the brush on? Because I mean, if you're writing out all these words, it, it's kind of fun to have a different variation. And then I started thinking, well, what if I did arrows? What if I did all sorts of different hand-drawn elements to start using in my videos? 
And that's what I've started doing. So I'm actually gonna give you a free pack of some of these brush on uh, paint strokes and arrows that we're gonna make right now. And uh, hopefully this can get you started. So that way when we get to the tutorial portion on the computer, uh, you've got a little something to test and tinker with if you're wanting to see how this works before you go and spend uh, lots of money on an iPad. So for brush strokes, basically I'll just hit screen record and I'll do a session of going through and trying to get a nice brush on look that I like and I'll let it sit every time for a little bit so that way on the screen recording file you have a little bit of time at the end of it. Don't like that one. And basically I just kind of repeat this until I, yeah, that was a cool one. That would work for like a lower thirds name. So we'll bring that over and uh, I'll show you how I actually get text then to show through on that. But then another thing I might do is some of these little hand drawn arrows. So. Let's go something like that. So I wanna show you some tips and tricks of how to then utilize this best inside of just quickly moving in your editing software. But first, I wanna tell you about the sponsor of this video, and that is Squarespace. I love Squarespace. I've been a customer of theirs for years, and the reason why I use them is it's a very efficient, effective, and easy way to represent my business online, my production company. This is how clients first find me is oftentimes they see a video, and then they go to my website to see, hey, is this someone we can trust to make us a video? So having a clean, great-looking website that works on all devices is really, really important to me. If you've got a business idea or you're trying to get into freelancing with photography or video or whatever creative field you might be in, you probably need a website. So I recommend heading over to Squarespace and setting up a free trial, just seeing what you can build in there uh, just with their free trial. And then when you're ready to commit, make sure to use my link in the description to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay. Here we are in the edit for this video, actually. Uh, we're doing it in Final Cut today, but this principle applies to any editing software. So I've got this sequence here of some drone shots, and we're gonna go down and we're gonna take that file that we airdropped to ourselves. Uh, typically, something like this, I would like doing a, like a hand-drawn intro title kind of thing. So here is our screen record. So the first thing I will do is crop out the interface of the app. So over here, you can select crop, bring it down. Premiere has crop options as well. You can bring it in a little tighter, but it's not really necessary. You basically just want your design left. Then you can go over and change the blending mode to screen. Wow, look at that. We're part of the way there. So we're gonna reposition this down. We're gonna go to a different drone shot. So obviously white text, you want to show up over um, darker background, you could do black drawing onto white and use, I think, the blending mode multiply. But we've got to speed this up now, so let's uh, let's get a speed ramp going. So find out where the drawing ends, right around, it was somewhere around here. That's where the drawing ends. So right where it finishes, we're gonna use the range tool in Final Cut. I've got a shortcut to bring up speed ramp stuff. We're gonna set it to 750. I found 750 is a good speed for kind of right on style text stuff. And let's now bring this to the start. So we want it playing over this clip right here. We're gonna bring it in a little bit. Oh, looks like we've got some leftover stuff up at the beginning that we're just gonna trim off. Okay, and we should, boom. See, now that feels a little fast for this one. So maybe we can just go, maybe we'll just go 400 times. Boom. 400 times looks great. Now, occasionally what I might do is chop it off here and then actually duplicate this and reverse it. So in order to do a reverse on a speed ramp like this, I believe we have to nest that. Yep, so we're just gonna change this into a nested clip or a compound clip. We're gonna duplicate it. Oh, that wasn't duplicate. Option drag to duplicate and then select that. We're gonna change the speed settings to reverse. And if we nest something, we have to re-add the blending mode. So we're just gonna select both of those real quick. And there's the blending mode back, so it's transparent. And we're gonna come and just trim off the beginning of the reversed clip that we did so that it goes quicker. And then we're gonna speed the reverse up just maybe about 200 times. Pretty nifty, eh? We've got this nice write on text, and then it goes away. Now I wanna show you the other variation where I do these paint on brush strokes to do. Um, so let's take in our brush stroke file. Let's just drop that right in on our active timeline here. 
we want to go down and find the one that we actually ended up keeping, which is this guy. So right before. Okay, right around there. Let's go forward a couple frames. Boom. So we're going to delete before and after. Okay, we want to leave a little bit of an end handle on this. Okay. And now let's go through and uh, repeat the similar steps of cropping out the interface. Okay, now this is where the steps change. So we're gonna go and create that. We're gonna create a compound clip here with this guy in it. Then we're gonna go into that compound clip and we're gonna go to our text tool and we're gonna create a basic just title right over top of that. But we're gonna make sure to write on our, geez, what am I doing? It's like I haven't even been in Final Cut before. Uh, we're gonna write on in black. So let's do that here real quick. There, I just made some quick changes to the typeface to kind of make it look a little better. So there's that. And again, we're gonna duplicate it so that way we can reverse it. So let's go ahead and set a reverse. And because it's a brush stroke, it typically actually looks okay in real time. So on the tail end, we're just gonna trim off just the front and have the reverse be a little quicker. So let's have the reverse go off at about 200% speed. Okay, so we play that through now. Look at that. A nice brush on. That's actually pretty good. I should probably just use that in the episode itself. <laughs> and then we'll show how it swipes off. Yeah, so we'd shorten the gap on that a little bit. So let's just kind of trim it up a tiny bit. And uh, so I really like that. I think it's got a good look to it. Uh, I appreciate that with these brush stroke versions, you can just go in now and just change that text to whatever you want really quickly. So we could say links in bio, description, What what is this, Instagram? You should follow me on Instagram. Uh, you can just easily switch up the text and then over in the actual sequence itself, it'll just change. So I use the brush on ones when I wanna go quickly, but if you wanna get a little more custom about the brush on, brush on ones, another thing you can do is actually just make a transparent black text hand drawn in the app bring it in as a PNG. And then when you place that over top of, let's see what where we're at here. That's how you can get kind of that organic look also in the text that's written on. But I usually prefer to go pretty quick. And if you've made these brush strokes once, the cool part is, is that you can then move those into another library and use them over again for a different title or a different thing. And with this technique, I'll also do little arrows that point to the description to say, hey, check out the links down there. There's a lot of little fun things you can do. And then when I just wanna add a, a generic title, sometimes I'll just do white writing over top of a transparent background on the iPad to just kind of add a little quick title that doesn't need any animating or anything like that. I hope you found that crazy helpful and exciting and exhilarating and it's just a fun way to get creative with your videos. If you have variations on this technique or ideas of how to use it, make sure to drop those in the comments because I'd love to find out different ways to do this, but it's so simple. One of the variations that I do is actually 3D track these now into a drone shot or something like that just to give it a little extra spice or flair that was actually the original title techniques I was doing years ago where I was animating in 3D track titles, kind of like fun for Louie, but I wanted this animation thing to have it draw on and I think that's a, a really fun twist on it. So if you aren't subscribed already, let's make that happen. Let's make this official. It'd be great to have you long-term, maybe hit notifications or something like that. But uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Remember, life's better when you make stuff. Peace.